Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Sam. I'm a professional hairstylist, and today's video is going to be another client horror story. <laughs> if you guys have ever seen any of my other story time videos, you know that every time I have any kind of negative experience, I always try to learn something from it. And the reason why I share these stories is because I want you to learn the lesson that I did and just know that if you ever go through something similar, you're not alone. So I did already post a video sharing this story several months ago. I have since deleted it because in that video, I think it was still just like a little fresh to me. And so I was like very animated in the video. It was also the first client story time that I ever posted. I just came off the wrong way in that video. So I wanted to sit down and refilm it because I feel like it was a good story and there were a lot of lessons that I learned from it. So if you already saw that original video and you know the story and you wanna skip this one, that's totally fine. So this story actually took place almost exactly a year ago. So one day this woman calls the salon where I work and she says that she saw a photo on the salon's Facebook page of this hair that we did and she absolutely loves it and she wants to get the exact same thing done. She's a new client, she's never been here before. So my boss actually answered the phone when she called and did a really thorough consultation with her she asked her, you know, what her hair currently looks like, what's her hair history, what has she done to it over the last year. They discussed the photo and what would need to be done to her hair in order to get it like the photo because the photo that she liked was of one of my boss's clients. So they were on the phone for quite a while and then my boss ended up scheduling this woman with me because I don't think she had any availability that week that the woman wanted to come in. And for the sake of the story, we will call her, you know, let, let's, let's stick with Susan. That's what I used in my last story time. Well, every problematic client, we will just call Susan from now on. No offense to any Susans out there. So a couple days later, Susan comes in for her appointment. My boss already gave me the rundown, filled me in on the conversation they had over the phone. But even still, of course, you know, I wasn't there. I wasn't the one talking with Susan, so I wanted to do my own consultation too. I'll show you guys a photo. This is the inspiration photo. And I actually found a photo on my phone. This was Susan's hair starting out with. So she had been getting highlights done for a long time and she has gray roots. So the inspiration photo is more of a balayage. There's a shadow root, she has a lot of dimension, there's some low lights in her hair, and it's also very ashy. So I discussed with Susan what would need to be done to her hair and what the difference is of what she's been getting, you know, just the traditional foiled highlights is, compared to the photo. We talked about, okay, so you want a darker root, you want the shadow root, you want some low lights, you want a more ashy tone. And again, this is everything that my boss had already discussed with her over the phone. Also, I have to mention too that when they were on the phone, Susan wanted to know approximately how much it would cost to get her hair, like the hair in the photo. And my boss gave her a price range, and I don't remember the exact number, but I wanna say she quoted her somewhere between like 200 and 250. So she agreed and said that was totally fine. They booked the appointment, okay? So now I'm doing my consultation with her again, just basically reiterating everything that was said on the phone with my boss. Now, even though my boss did the hair in the photo, I was there that day, I was helping her out. She had the formula written down. She told me exactly what she did on her. And my boss and I work almost the same exact way. Like a lot of the techniques that I used, I either learned from her or we've gone and taken classes together. So the work that we produce is very similar. She obviously felt confident enough in me and my skills to book this new client with me. So anyway, we get started and I believe I started first by going over her gray roots and then I was going through and taking some panels and just freehand painting with lightener and then taking a few pieces throughout and doing a low light. And the low light that I was using was not super dark. It was still blonde. It was just a little bit of a darker blonde. I did like an ashy level eight, which is exactly what was done to the girl in the inspiration photo. And for those of you who aren't hairstylists and are like, what the hell is a level eight? There's 10 levels to hair, one being the darkest, like a black, and then 10 being your lightest blonde. I did an eight. So it's still a blonde. It's just a little bit darker. That's what's gonna give you that dimension. If her hair was just all one solid color, there'd be no dimension. It wouldn't look like the photo. And she said she wanted low lights. She wanted dimension. She wanted a dark shadow root. So I did the exact same technique on Susan that my boss did on the girl in the inspiration photo. Now there were definitely some red flags throughout this entire appointment. I actually did a separate video where I talked about red flags of potentially problematic clients. I'll put a link to that in the cards as well as down in the description in case you haven't seen it. But I mean, she really just displayed like almost all of those red flags. First of all, Susan just kept questioning me the entire time throughout. And here's the thing, it's totally fine to ask your stylist questions. Like 
I'm not saying that you should just sit in somebody's chair and just blindly let them do whatever. If you are concerned about what they're doing, or maybe you just are genuinely curious and you like to know. Even before I went to beauty school, I always was just like interested in hair. And so when I would go to get something done, I just was curious what they were doing because I just wanted to learn. So there's nothing wrong with asking questions. And I'm one of those stylists that I'm so happy to explain everything I'm doing and to educate my clients if that's something that they seem interested in. You know, like I always like to be totally open and transparent. So I didn't mind that at all, but there's a difference between asking because you're just curious and then asking in kind of like a snooty way and in a way where you're trying to like undermine or doubt me. Another thing that was a huge red flag was at one point we were talking about microblading and eyelash extensions. We still had a girl at the salon that was doing microblading so she was asking some questions about that and she was asking me how much does that stuff cost and the girl that was doing microblading at the time was running a special and was charging I think 250 or 300 for the microblading which if you guys know anything about microblading that's that's pretty cheap she was like just kind of starting out so she was just doing like a little promo kind of discounted price and she was like oh my god that is so expensive and you know obviously that's all relative sure I'm not trying to say that $250 isn't expensive but microblading lasts a minimum of one year. Some people can last two, even up to three years. So yeah, you're paying $250 up front and that can be a lot, but if it's something that's gonna last you like two years, the most concerning part is she was quoted on the phone when she booked her appointment that her hair was gonna cost around 200 to 250. So she knew that she was going to be paying between 200 and 250 dollars that day on her hair. Also during the consultation, we talked about the maintenance of her hair color, how often she was gonna have to come in, what was gonna need to be done. So she knew that in another few months, her hair was gonna need to be touched up and she was gonna have to pay more money to maintain her color. So for you to say that microblading, which lasts like two years, is really expensive for $250, but you know that you're gonna be paying about that today for your color, that's only gonna last you for a couple of months, it was a little bit concerning. Do, do, do you get what I'm saying? Another red flag, and she actually had mentioned this on the phone when she was talking to my boss, and my boss even warned me before she had came in. She said that she's been to pretty much every salon in the area and has just never been satisfied with her hair. I know a lot of stylists in the area where I live and there's a lot of really great salons and really talented stylists. So yes, of course it's possible that she just happened to keep booking with people that just weren't the right fit for her, but sometimes when you have a client that tells you, I've been to all of these different places and nobody can do my hair right, like 75% of the time, at least, I would say, it's probably more of an issue with them than the stylist. You know what I mean? Like they are probably just impossible to please or maybe their expectations just aren't realistic. So my boss had warned me, she was like, she said that she's been to all these different places and has never been satisfied. So I just have a feeling from talking to her on the phone, like something in my gut is just telling me that she might kind of cause a little bit of a problem. But me being like super naive and optimistic, I was like, oh, it'll be fine. I will just kill her with kindness and I'll just really do an amazing job and she'll love it, it'll be so great. I got this. <laughs> but yeah, I was feeling really optimistic. So I don't want you guys to think that, you know, I already was assuming that she was gonna cause problems. And so I was like treating her differently or just kind of like expecting something. I was really just trying to do my best and make her happy just like I do with any client. So anyway, I rinse out all of her color, then I go and apply her toner. Again, same formula that was used on the girl in the inspiration photo. And then I bring her back over to my chair to do her haircut because she wanted a cut as well. And she says she wants the exact same haircut as the girl in the photo. In the photo, her hair is very short in the back and then it gets longer in the front. So I do another consultation with her and I'm asking her, okay, well, what is it about this particular haircut that you like. It comes up very short in the back. Are you okay with that? Do you normally pull your hair up in a ponytail? Do you want to still be able to do that? And she was like, oh yeah, no, I don't want it that short. I put my hair up all the time. I still want to be able to do a ponytail. Then when I'm looking at her hair, I notice that she already has a bit of an angle. It already is shorter in the back, longer in the front. And she's saying that that's what she likes about the picture, that it's longer in the front, shorter in the back. And I'm like, well, you already currently have that. 
If you'd like, I can make the back a little bit shorter and make the angle a little more dramatic, but then you're not gonna be able to pull it back in a ponytail as well. Anyway, long story short, after a nice thorough consultation about her haircut, we end up keeping her haircut how it is. I just did a little bit of a trim. And the reason why I bring that up is because had I just said, oh, you want the haircut in the photo? Perfect, no problem. And did that on her, she would have hated it because it would have been way too short in the back. She wouldn't have been able to put it up in a ponytail. And it's just interesting to me because she was so sure and so confident, I want exactly the hair in the photo. Like this, give this to me. This is what I want on my head. But then when we really broke it down and I really started asking her more questions, it turns out that's not at all what she wanted. So anyway, I finished her haircut. She loved the cut, was super happy with that. So after I'm done blow drying her, she's just looking in the mirror and is just like shaking her head and she's like, this is not what I wanted. I was so proud of her hair. I thought that I killed it. It looked so nice. It was pretty much exactly like the photo. And I was really excited about it and I was expecting her to be so happy and love it. And then when she's just like, I hate this, I was like, what? what? What do you mean? So the thing is when I was doing her hair, it was in December. So obviously the days are just kind of darker and then it gets dark super early. So by the time I was finishing her hair, the sun was setting. So there was no natural sunlight outside. And in the salon where I work, we just have overhead fluorescent lights. They're not the best at all. And I know when I posted this video originally, people were like, well, that's so unprofessional. How are you gonna have bad lighting in a salon? Da -da 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 -da. I don't own the salon where I work. It just, it, it is what it is. And honestly, lighting has never really been a huge issue. This client in particular is the only one where it was a problem. And we do get a lot of really nice natural sunlight in the salon. So it's really only just at night after the sun sets where it gets really dark and then we have to rely on the crappy fluorescent lights. So she's telling me that it's too dark, it looks nothing like the photo, and she's sitting there and she's like looking in the mirror at it up close, like holding up different pieces, and she's telling me that like right here, up top, is nice and bright, and it's beautiful and exactly how she wants it, but down here at the bottom is too dark. When you're standing outside or in front of big bright lights like I am right now filming this, everything is gonna look brighter. The color is gonna be more vibrant. You can see it a little bit better. If you're just standing inside a room that has fluorescent ceiling lights, it's gonna be darker. It's not as brightly lit. Also, all of the lights are coming from the ceiling, so they're just hitting the top of your head. So of course, everything up top is gonna appear brighter and lighter because that's where the light's hitting it. Down here, you have shadows. So this is gonna look darker because of the way that the light is hitting it. So I'm trying to explain that to her because I've experienced that before with hairstylists where, you know, as a client, you're not super happy with the final product and then they start backpedaling and telling you like, oh, well, after you wash it a couple times, it'll be different. When you go outside, it'll look different, da da da, -da. And it's like, it sounds like they're just making up excuses and lying to just try to like get you to be satisfied so they don't have to like deal with you or like fix the problem. So I was trying really hard to not come across that way because that's not what I was trying to do, but I wanted to really genuinely explain to her because I understood her concern and I understood why she was seeing it the way she was seeing it. So I was trying to explain that to her because I know that if she were to have stepped outside or was in a better lit room, she would have been more happy with her hair and she would have seen that it did look just like the photo. So I'm trying to explain that to her with the lighting. Also, the toner that I used was a more ashy tone. Ashy tones don't reflect light as much as warm tones do, so they can appear darker. But that's what she said that she wanted. She said she wanted the same thing as the photo and that she wanted ashier hair. And she was just starting to get so annoyed, so mad and was becoming really rude. So then I suggested, okay, well the inspiration photo was taken in front of a big bright white ring light. Why don't I bring that light down here and you can see your hair in front of that same light and then you can see that it looks exactly the same as the photo does. The difference is you're looking at it under totally different lighting. If the girl in the photo were to walk in this room right now, her hair would look how yours does. It would look dark to you because we're in a darker Room. But she was just like, I yeah, I, I understand that and I don't care. I asked for the hair in this photo. You didn't give me that, so I'm not happy. So, <laughs> like, 
So at this point, I wasn't really sure what to do. So I went and got my boss. Also, if I needed to use extra product or anything on her, I wanted to make sure I was running it by my boss first. My boss comes over and, you know, is asking her the same kind of questions. And she's like, maybe it's just the toner. Maybe the ashy toner is making it look too dark. And that's what you don't like. I can pull the toner out a little bit and we can see if that makes it any better. And she's like, ugh. How long is that gonna take? Cause I've already been here all day. So my boss does that. She has a little clarifying treatment to get some of the toner out. She's still not happy, still saying it's too dark. So my boss is like, okay, well, you know, maybe I can throw a couple more highlights in there for you, take out some of those low lights. So my boss literally just popped in, I think maybe like four highlights on her entire head. Like she just put like two, like right here. It didn't even really change the final look and I wish that I had an opportunity to take after pictures so that I could show you guys. The difference was so subtle that I feel like if I put side by side photos, you probably wouldn't have even really noticed. So I forgot to mention this, but after my boss added the highlights, Susan was still looking at the inspiration picture and was saying something about how the blonde pieces kind of look like ribbons and something about the dimension referring basically to the way that her hair is waved so my boss was like well it looks that way because of the waves if you'd like I can add waves in your hair so it can look like that and then after she added waves then all of a sudden she was super happy with it so who knows maybe if I had just added waves to her hair in the first place she would have been happy with it because it would have looked more identical to the photo. So anyway, she ended up getting a discount and then she ended up rebooking with my boss to get it touched up, came in for that appointment and then never returned again. And then I ended up hearing from one of my stylist friends that Susan went to make an appointment at her salon and was saying that she had came to the salon where I work and got her hair done two times and loved it the first time, but the second time didn't. What? The second time, nothing was even different. I think she just got her roots touched up. Like, so that's why I just feel like she's one of those people that will just never be satisfied. You know, like she just always is gonna be a salon hopper. I just felt like, especially the comment she was making about the microblading. I don't know. I just like started to get this feeling that she was gonna try to get a discount or try to like not pay at all. And maybe that wasn't her intention going into it, but and I have heard from other stylists in the area that that's something that she does pretty regularly at other places as well. So it doesn't totally surprise me. And that just pisses me off because we work hard to please our clients. You know, the job that we do, yeah, it's not the most difficult job in the whole world, but it's not easy either. And we spend a lot of time and a lot of money going and taking classes, using the best products possible. And it's just a real slap in the face when somebody tries to get away without paying or throwing a fit and being really rude to you to try to get a discount. So that brings us to the moral of the story and the lesson that I learned from it and something that I really wanna share with you guys. If you're a client, I think that this is something really important to keep in mind. And if you're a stylist, this is something that you need to really remember to explain because if your client doesn't understand this, there's a higher chance that they're going to be unhappy at the end. The lesson here is bringing in inspiration photos is amazing. I always highly encourage it because if you're just gonna explain to somebody, oh, I want a honey blonde, color is so subjective. So what I would consider a honey blonde could be totally different to someone else's version of a honey blonde, you know? So photos are always the best way to communicate with your stylist and get on the same page with them and show them this is the hair that I like, this is the tone, this is the placement, this is the haircut, you know, whatever. However, you have to keep in mind that you cannot have the exact same hair that's in the photo. And I know in the story I was saying that I gave her the same hair that the girl in the photo had because I know what that girl's hair actually looks like. She's one of our regular clients. I see her all the time. I was there when her hair was done. I know what it looks like in real life. Susan has only ever seen that one still image of that hair. And so even though I know if the two of them were standing side by side, their hair would be very, very similar, practically identical, but Susan has only ever seen that photo. And so she's looking at this still image and then looking at herself in the mirror 
moving around in totally different lighting and she's not seeing the same thing. Is that my fault? Does that mean that I did something wrong as far as the way I did her color? No but that does mean that I messed up during our consultation and that I will take full credit for. And this is something that I kind of like came to realize later on the more that I thought about it because in the moment I was so upset and I wanted to literally go in the back and just cry because I had just spent so many hours on her hair and I was so proud of it and I really tried my best and for her to be so rude to me, it, it was upsetting and it's hard sometimes in those situations to not take things personally and get upset. But after I've processed everything, I realized that's where I messed up and that's where, sure, maybe she's just a problematic client and maybe she would have complained regardless, but had I been a little more thorough with the consultation, even though I, I thought at the time that I did a good job, I asked as many questions as I could, but had I explained this to her, it could have eliminated the issue in the end. Number one, photos are still images. You're not seeing what that hair looks like when it's moving around. You're not seeing it in real life. If you were to see them in video or in person, their hair would probably look a little bit different than it does in that still image because you're not capturing the color in full. Color also reflects light. So it, it's gonna look different in different lighting, the way that you have your head tilted, the way that it's styled even. Also different cameras pick up color differently. So that person in that photo, you could take three different cameras, three different phones and take a photo of the exact same hair and it's going to look different in each one. Also, like I said, color is a reflection of light, which means it is 100% dependent on the light that you're looking at it under. I saw this awesome photo on Instagram. It's the same person on the same day, their hair color is the same, but in all of the different kinds of lighting, their color looks so incredibly different. So if you're outside in natural lighting versus inside under big bright white lights, a big bright ring light, if you're in really orange lighting, if you're in a very poorly lit room, if you're under fluorescent lights, if you're under a purple light, like your hair color is going to look completely different in all of those different circumstances because it's going to reflect the light that is shining on it. So the only way that your hair can look exactly the same as your inspiration photo is if you were to literally stand in the exact same pose under the exact same lighting and take a photo of it with the exact same camera, with the exact same background. Cause that's the thing too, like even the stuff in the background, the colors in the background, the color the person is wearing of their shirt can affect the way that the color is gonna look. Another thing to keep in mind too, that wasn't the case in this story in particular, but this happens to me sometimes where clients will bring in photos of hair and there's a filter on it or it looks like it's edited a little bit. The photo that you're looking at might not even be realistic anyway. Or let's be real, it could just be a wig. So anyway, that is gonna be it for this video. That is my story of Susan and a little lesson in color and lighting and expectations. If you like story time videos and you'd like me to do more, please give the video a thumbs up. It helps my channel out a lot. And also make sure that you're subscribed and hit the bell notification so you don't miss my future uploads. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.